Hey friends, welcome to episode number 83 of It'll Be Fine. I'm your friend and your pal, Kelly Zemnikas, and on today's show, we are having a food chat with the wonderful, the funny, the super cool, the very French, Marcel St. Pierre. Oh my gosh, I am so glad Marcel is here today. We're going to have a good talk about food, about TV shows, about TV and food. Um, We have known each other, gosh, I think I was like 16 or 17 when I met Marcel, so it's been about a week, (laughs) but it's going good. (laughs) He is uh, just a gem. I am super glad he is here today, and uh, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff, and Gord Oxley, we're going to be talking about you too, buddy. I've made Gord worried. Gord is watching this right now, starting to sweat. It's going to be fine, Gord. It's going to be fine. (laughs) And on today's show, we are offering love, offering attention to Red Nose Remedy. Info on them is in the show description. So guys, get ready. Get ready for a gluten-free adventure of It'll Be Fine. (laughs) My dad painted that. He did. (laughs) It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Hey, guess guess what I just found? What did you just found? Gord Oxley's headshot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look at him. He's a baby. Wow. He's like equal parts like uh, Matt yeah. Frewer and, uh, yeah. and the actor who played uh, Barkley on Star Trek. <laughs> so funny. How are, you doing? How are you I'm doing? I'm good. Now? Yeah, you know, surviving, living... Yeah through this whole BS thing and uh, just like, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pandemic. Who thought ever up to this point we would ever deal with something like this? And uh, yeah. Yeah. How are you my, doing? I have my moments, I have to say, where I think to like what the kids were doing in 1918 when this happened the last time. Yeah. And God damn, I'm grateful for technology and medicine and yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, you therapy. <laughs> uh, therapy for sure. Uh, living in an era where, at least in our society, the idea of everybody needs therapy is pretty much accepted, and yeah, doesn't mean you have to have huge behavioral or emotional issues. It's just everybody, I think, needs therapy and to accept that sometimes things are hard and mm-hmm. that's okay. Absolutely. Yeah, I've been a, I mean, I'm a big, I'm a big foodie, as most people know. And so I've, you know, I'm always at home cooking. I've definitely been trying to do the breads and stuff. Have, have you and Leah yeah. been trying to make, make things during these past few months? We have a starter that's in okay. the uh, fridge, a uh, sourdough starter that yeah. uh, she is going to get to at some point but see she tried to do starter one time before pre-pandemic times and it was out on the counter for the longest time until it looked really terrible and i threw it out not realizing that that was part of the thing it's supposed to look like it's evil it's supposed to look like it's going to kill you and then you make something out of it. Don't throw it away. So I was, I was punished. She was like, no, I'm never trying again. But now it's back there. And uh, I've been very good about respecting that she'll get to it when she feels like creating. So That's we've good. got that. I've really turned over into uh, cooking land myself. Mm-hmm. I'm doing a lot. I just made a, a really good uh, homemade lasagna oh. the other night. And um, the, the, the trick is because I'm gluten-free, because everything gluten-free is not necessarily delicious. Uh, you have to Fair. find your products and your brands that actually work. Yeah. So there's, there was a really nice non-cook lasagna that I found that was gluten-free. It was like a, like right. a quinoa rice mix. Um, that was amazing. And also I've taught myself to make uh, like butter chicken, like a curry um, oh. from, uh, from absolute scratch. And we both like stuff with a bit of heat. So mm-hmm. we're learning to experiment with different, different peppers and different, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, sauces and spices and stuff like that. So it's amazing. That's so awesome. Okay. 
I, yeah, I've always sort of felt at home in a kitchen, but for sure, just like I know four or five things. And so I won't cook every day. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) And because we've been here every day Mm -hmm. for like every meal, uh, then you, you really start getting creative. And then it really turned into a thing of, well, we bought an instant pot. So let's Uh look online and get some ideas here. So yeah, I'm getting a lot braver with like, I kind of have an idea what I'm doing. I kind of have an idea what not to do. So you don't ruin it, you know, (laughs) concept of, you know, if, if you're adding salty and you want uh, you want salty and savory, don't put something sweet in there. That's not mm-hmm. probably going to work. Yeah. Um, and just, yeah, your acids versus your, 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 your bitter tastes and all that kind of stuff. Just mixing it up. That's awesome. Around. Becoming yeah. a bit of a chemist, which is kind of fun. Yeah. So I, um, far we're both yeah. alive. So <laughs> that's a win. <laughs> yeah. That Nothing is poisonous <laughs> has been made. I have to say, I would just did some grocery shopping before we sat down to, to chat here. And uh, I'm yeah. not usually like the person who buys stuff at, at the cash. Like I, I have what I need. I have my list. I get in, I right. get out. This just, this got me. I just picked uh, this up. Well, Baby Yoda is not, you can't even call it an impulse buy. It's a must have for sure. Three cookies. I only get three cookies in this. They really know what they're doing, right? They're like, oh. we're going to overpackage this. You'll only get three cookies. You're going to pay. I'm going to say you paid nine ninety nine for that or eleven ninety nine. Nine. This was nine dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. I'm embarrassed. No, don't be. That's. I think that's clear. <laughs> that. Yeah. Baby Yoda is beautiful. He needs it's to so be embraced. It's so cute. It is so cute. Forms. He's literally it's... one of those little things. You're going. He's so cute. I want to eat him. So. I know. You're now I get them. to. I know. Yeah. I hope this comes with scissors. That would make the nine dollar value. <laughs> I don't. Think <laughs> oh no! Comes. Bring your own damn scissors. Yeah, they don't want to charge you twenty nine ninety nine for this. So ridiculous. I was yeah. um, the the reason I, I whipped out the Gord Oxley photos because I uh I was going through my book of things. I've got <laughs> a, like we've known each other since what ninety five. Uh, yeah. Something? earlier than that i think 93 90 92 or 93 yeah something like that and something i've got like this that. i've got this big collection of like toronto improv stuff from over the years because that's where i got my start back at big city improv back in the day um that reminds me do you remember mm. mr pong's truck that used to hang out in front of big city improv yes did you ever get anything off of that truck yes <gasps> This was way before the whole, why does food make me feel gross era where I was like, oh, right. I should probably avoid wheat. I would just eat all of these. Yeah. Oh these, these deep fried wheat bombs, whatever. It's like a whole ton of yeah. wheat with a tiny piece of meat in the middle of it. And there you go. There's your, there's your, your thing. Or the, uh, they used to have huge, huge egg rolls. Yep. Yeah. And I'd love to, yeah the truck would drive literally half a block from where the store was. Cause the Pong, Mr. Pong's, if I'm not mistaken, was just on the other side of uh, Bathurst. I think so, but that's yeah. far, that's far. You should drive. <laughs> they were literally like, you know, maybe people are too drunk to walk from the bovine sex club all the way over yes. here. So let's just drive to them. Or the horizontal boogie bar, which was across the street. Yes. Yeah. That was that one was in where that's where those buildings burned down, right? Where uh, I believe so. Yeah, it Duke's yeah. bicycle is now. Yeah, or so, was. Wow, I think you might be the only person that I know who bought stuff off of that. Because for the viewers at home who don't know, this was uh, like a improv and and a comedy club back in the '90s in downtown Toronto, and what was then a bit sketchier part of Queen Street West. And this yes. little truck would just show up like 11, 11.30 at night. And uh, I was convinced it was a drug front. I, well, yeah, I mean, I it, mean probably, it probably was. Yeah, kind of any successful <laughs> gross out yet delicious restaurant on that stretch had to be a, a drug front as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I don't know how they were getting away with it because at the time, I mean, it's hard enough now to get yeah. a truck license to sell food. I just think they were you know, either skirting the law or uh, one of the very few 
that we're allowed to have a license for that kind of stuff. Like Toronto yeah. is not a food truck friendly city at no. all. That it's is a, not a it's thing a here. It's a street dog place and that's yeah. kind of it. It's, yeah. it's, we're still not, still not doing great in that regard, but it's better. That's you true. Know, than it was for sure. There's certainly more choice now, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I can't wait for that to open up even more. I, and I think it will oh once God. this pandemic lifts, I think a ton of people will be, uh, yeah, yeah, looking to experiment with, with uh, how to monetize their culinary skills and exactly. talents. Yeah, I think we're in the process of like, the well, we see it with, with shops closing and restaurants, you know, closing their doors. But we're in the process of that landscape changing of like how we get our food, how we, how we mm -hmm. survive in this time. Now, um, how long have you been doing the gluten-free thing? And was it just a, was it because you physically weren't feeling well or you just thought yeah. one day... I'll switch it up. It was a gradual thing of just not feeling well. And then mm -hmm. there was, uh, there was a, a year I was just sick for a whole year, like just Damn. cold after cold, miserable. And I would oh. just feel super gross after meals and especially the, the, my evening meal. Like I would oh. drag my butt out to bad dog or uh, second city or wherever mm -hmm. I was at the time. And mm -hmm. just literally, it was really, even though I was happy to be there and wanted to perform and wanted to improvise, I was so exhausted by 10, 11 o'clock, like to the point of, I would just leave, you know, and I, I was gone. I would turn into a pumpkin at midnight. I just had to go and sleep it off. And I just suddenly realized that, yeah, all this carby wheat stuff, um, was killing me. And uh, mm -hmm. I thought for the longest time, it was definitely a gluten allergy. I'd never felt pain. I was just always exhausted. Yeah. So wheat, oddly enough, I, I mean, I stay away from it kind of like 100%. If I get any cross contamination, that's mm -hmm. not a deal breaker for me. Okay. I'll kind of notice it right away. Like I'll get a stuffy nose. That's the first sort of telltale sign that I yeah. get. Yeah. Um, and then I can, for some reason, eat sourdough. Hmm. Uh, okay. I can eat, I can eat sourdough for a couple of days in a row before I go, okay, knock it off. Yeah. Your body's like, wait a minute. <laughs> it just, it piles up and it's just like, okay, there, uh, Icarus, slow yeah. down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe just salads for you today, buddy. Yeah. yeah. So but, are, hmm? yeah, I was just going to say like, are you at, at like, I guess I, everything now I have to reference is pre-pandemic. Were you a big restaurant guy or did you really keep yeah. those at home? We, we loved, I mean, we figured out kind of like our five go-to places mm. that, you know, uh, could either deliver on their own or that yeah. weren't ridiculous charges in, in, in Uber Eats or Foodora or whatever. Mm -hmm. So yeah. like we have a Thai place that we go to. Um, we had a, uh, like a Mediterranean place. Uh, we had um, um, a Pakistani place, La Hortica. We would have to go pick that stuff up though. Mm -hmm. uh, and then pizza now is easy to get gluten-free as well with not bad crusts actually, not uh, not really bad. Pizza, pizza Yola, yeah. yo, no oh. kickback from that, but I love that place. <laughs> the unofficial sponsor of today's show. <laughs> of um, me. <laughs> Pizza pizza gets like ragged on a lot in this city as not being like the greatest pizza, but mm. I have to give them props for their cauliflower crust. It oh, is yeah? phenomenal. And I'm not gluten free, ah. but I order that other than any other pizza by them. Um, yeah. It is so good. Ah, so good. I had never, never, I didn't even know that they had any, any option at this point. They did like... At some point in 2019, they put it on the menu and then they took it off. And I think like the outcry was like, bring it back. Because <laughs> it's yeah. good. It's really oh, good. good. Oh, that's amazing. You know, like the good, the, the good thing I will say about bad pizza is sometimes you just know what you're getting. Yeah. And it's, it's cheap and it's plentiful. So for me, it's pizza. Like the fact that we have now said pizza it's more than two times. I will <laughs> yeah. <be getting> <laughs> <laughs> And then in 2010, just made a big switch and uh, went to work for um, Shaw Media that is now owned by Chorus, right. working for uh, like 
Food Network uh, and HGTV, among other, other things. So it was- Get a me a show. Get me a show. Put this on I'll do that way. right now. I'll get us both a show. <laughs> this is our show right now. This is our pilot. <laughs> Um, but I was spending all this time watching Chopped and, uh, yeah. and uh, Beat Bobby Flay and all yeah. this stuff. And then just kind of soaking up that culture and realizing, oh, like, um, what was Chef Lynn Crawford's show? That was uh, Pitching oh, In, yeah. which was Pitching, super fun. Yeah. So I got to know her show. and then realized we live not too far from her restaurant. Uh, Ruby Watchco. Ruby Watchco, which so sadly, sadly oh. has closed down. Oh. Isn't that gross? Oh, no. um, it it's such so a downer. Good. Yeah, such a good place. I mean, it was not a go every month mm. place or it no. was maybe a go once a year place because yep. if you got the wine pairings for two people, it could easily be $300. Uh, so insane. So yeah. a Valentine's Day or a, you know, a, a Christmas or New Year's Eve kind of a thing. But good. So amazing. That was such such good food and such amazing service like everyone there was just a dream you know to to deal with and it would be the same people the next yeah. year we would go like so you go these yeah. people are making a good living here which is yeah. which is nice in anything service industry related you know um mm -hmm. absolutely yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that was a good joint do you think you'd be good on a, a show like chopped or beat bobby flay Believe it or not, I was on a show as a kitchen gadget guy. What? Uh, yeah, the show. What the hell was the show? I'd have to go back and look at my resume. It's on there somewhere. <laughs> it was a show like we're talking 97 or 98. Okay. And uh, literally it was just about home cooking and, uh, you know, how to, how to elevate your home, your mm -hmm. home cooking. And I was just the weirdo, wacko gadget guy who would just be like, today we're going to talk about garlic peelers. And I had literally no experience in it, nothing. But they were like, you're an improviser. So five minutes before they would roll camera, they'd be like, mm -hmm. here's this new, you know, lobster fork. This is what yeah. it does. Are you ready? Good, roll. And they, they <laughs> might, they do two takes. Um, and I remember one day I did maybe... 10 days of shooting for like the whole season. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, not even 10 days of shooting. Sorry. We did like all the shooting in maybe two days and it was like 10 or 20 episodes. But I remember towards the end of the day, I was like, I do not think the host likes me. <laughs> Were you on Yan Can Cook? I loved Yan Can Cook. That was so good. Every apron was a journey. It was good. Oh. All, all the lame jokes on his apron. So good. That guy. And who's yeah. the other one? Um, Pasquale, yeah. the Kitchen Express, who the guy who would sing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I knew of him. I didn't, Loved but I it. was just, I was, I was absolutely in love with Stephen Yang, only, uh, Stephen Yan, only because he was always cracking jokes and they were so lame, but beautiful. Oh. And it was always like a walk based joke. Like walk, can you yeah. do? Exactly. Or walk <laughs> this way. <laughs> You're kind of sporting the look. Mm. The urban peasant. <laughs> yeah, I remember that guy. I love this guy. <laughs> what is that, 96, he said? This was the 96 milk calendar. I wow. still have, yeah. Because I, as a kid, would watch these shows. Yeah. I feel like I've got the little check marks. I would, I would watch the show or, like, get the calendars, and I'd, I'd make notes, handwritten notes, you know. Cause That's amazing. There was no iPhone back then. <laughs> it was pens and, and we liked it <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i would do that diligently and like make notes and be like i'm gonna make this dish amazing yeah. that's amazing I yeah i them. i don't think i ever was really i wasn't really motivated as a kid to really bother to cook anything just a couple of things well yeah. cooking literally the extent of my cooking when my mo mom was around because my mom is an excellent like macgyver cook Mm -hmm. So it was like literally like Love that. W we have an onion and and uh, and uh, you know a, a piece of chicken. Boom! Next minute it would be a casserole. <laughs> like I don't know how she managed, but it was always good and filling and wonderful. Mm -hmm. With me and my brother, it was literally if she wasn't home, it was more like what's in the freezer, <laughs> you know. So it keeps me with my girlish figure, which you do have. That's what we all talk about. It's true. <laughs> well, Marcel's girlish figure. <laughs> what girlish figure Marcel has. 
But that's the thing, like there is so much out there when it comes to food. And I, I, when I, you know, in the before times when I have, you know, a party or have family over and make things. And I always actually really love it when someone will say, oh, I've got, you know, this restriction or I can't do this or I can't do that. I'm going to be a pain. I'll bring my own thing. I'm Mm -hmm. like, no, 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 no. You've given me this amazing opportunity to discover how to do a dish a different way, discover something new for my repertoire. And then we can all eat the same meal and everyone can feel good. Cause like when you're sharing things and you're not singling the person out with the gluten allergy or the peanut allergy. Yeah. Amazing feeling. There's yeah. food out there. I have to say my, my mother-in-law is amazing at, she's worked out so many delicious alternatives for me. Uh, awesome. And uh, yeah. I have a, yeah, my sister-in-law, one of my sisters-in-law will not eat anything that even like if she has even heard the word (laughs) (laughs) gluten-free 48 hours, she will not touch it, but it's, it's delicious. There are so many Mm -hmm. choices now that you can do um, that are, that are simple and easy. And Mm -hmm. I like it better too. When I know that people, people can eat it. I also don't like it if people make a fuss, like I'd rather, if I know, whatever it is has panko bread on it for instance i just won't have that dish but i'll have all the other stuff too you know so it's good yeah no it feels good yeah Yeah. you you don't want to be made a made a fuss over but at the same time it's when they make a fuss and it's delicious it's good (laughs) like it's all mine (laughs) because that's sometimes the thing gluten-free on the package does not mean edible oh hell yeah there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of experimentation Yes. That's one thing. Like I used to work at this bakery here in Toronto called Bunners, a Mm. vegan gluten-free bakery. And it would really blow my mind when people would come in and just assume because it was vegan and gluten-free and nut-free that Mm. it was a healthy indulgence. It's not the case, folks. There's a shit ton of sugar in that stuff. That's, (laughs) yeah. The same with, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, people would come in saying they've got this diet or this diet. And I would mm-hmm. explain to them, well, none of these things are fine for you. They all have what you've mentioned. And then people cave and be like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'll just have two. <laughs> yeah, give me one of the death sticks. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> just call the ambulance. I've got three minutes for them to get me to St. <laughs> Joseph's. Like, I'm your cashier. I'm not your next of kin. You know, don't, <laughs> You'll don't do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, sometimes. So, I mean, how bad can really their, uh, you know, their intolerance be at that point? Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Like for me, I, I, I don't automatically, you know, expire if something <laughs> on the list gets, gets in. It's just that, uh, you know, I'll suffer for it, you know, within a few hours or the next day. And yeah, then I've learned something. Yeah. <laughs> speaking, <laughs> speaking of multitudes of food options, mm-hmm. do you remember... I'll see if you're if this strikes memory. <laughs> this, this is from 1996. We went to quite a party for this movie. Yes, I do remember. You remember that. this? I do remember that. I loved that movie so <laughs> much, and I I'd never heard about it. Uh, and you were kind enough to invite me to the gala for it. I have. Look we what had I sliders, have. Sliders, if I remember. We had a lot. There was a lot of 50s like sliders and sloppy joes, but yeah. I've got the ticket right there. Ah, amazing. Ah. I was at the warehouse. Cool. Yeah. I knew, I knew it was down by the lake for sure. Yeah. I remember we were on the streetcar on our way down to like the harbor front area and we kept missing the stop because we kept talking about the movie and we got back <laughs> on the car. Because <laughs> cause where did we see the movie? Was it at the um, Uptown? Or? The movie, I believe, oh... Did I just take the page away? I think it was the Uptown, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Yeah. A uh, theater that no longer exists in Toronto. That was one of my favorite places to go. That's the same of the times right now. It's just oh. like, it, 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 it is partially because everything is changing over so quickly, but it is, it is also the fact we've been here so long that we're now, you, you remember that thing? Remember that, that's, this? That's, yeah. that's where that thing that isn't around anymore used to be. It's so good. Yeah. yeah. It was such a good film. It was such a great film, but yeah, that was a good like mixed buffet and yeah, those sloppy joes. Yeah. Did we see, was Tom Hanks there? 
there was talk that Tom Hanks was there, but we didn't run into him. We did run into someone else, though. I want to say like Paul Gross or some like Canadian celeb oh. of the moment. <laughs> well, that's not hard to do. Just walk around. Uh, I know. That's funny. Yeah. But no, that's yeah, I, I, I do remember a hubbub of, oh, oh he said he might be over there, but literally yeah. it was packed with people. And I'm like, yeah. well, we're, 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 we're also, you know, height challenged, vertically challenged people. So, You're you know, it's why I've always loathed parades. I will not go to a parade. <laughs> What is your go-to movie snack when we could do things like go to the movies? Oh, uh, popcorn and M&Ms, the mm. peanut, peanut yes. kind or almond. Ooh. Yeah. And like both okay. handfuls, like one hand feeds the salty popcorn <laughs> and then you throw in like <laughs> three or four M&Ms right after that. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you share your popcorn? I do. I share, uh, nice. share popcorn. Well, the popcorn that they give you, even the small bags are just so huge. So there's always enough. Even if you think there's you can so eat a much. whole small bag, that's you me. You can anyway. feed the whole line. I wouldn't recommend Seriously. doing that now, but you could have passed that <laughs> popcorn back to the line. Yeah. Seriously, I have enough. <laughs> I don't know you, but go take, eat this. It's fine. Oh gosh. That brings up another memory of being at the Uptown Theater for a movie. Do you remember when, like, it felt like every single improviser in the city of Toronto, we all went to go see Mars Attacks at the Uptown? Oh, yeah? It was like this excursion about, like, 95 or 96. It's but, such a good film. Yeah. Oh, God, that was so good. And the drummer for the band Our Lady Peace was sitting behind us. Oh. <laughs> and I, I had a moment where I had a tap on the shoulder. I don't know yeah. who I was sitting beside, like, Sam Agro or someone yeah. I, I can't remember who I was saying beside tap on my shoulder and I recognized the dude from the band because I like the band and yeah. he was like do you all fucking know each other like what's going on here he's asking us this <laughs> yeah sorry our lady peace are we bothering your viewing pleasure here yes we are going to be making jokes for the whole thing this is a row of improvisers sorry yeah so much fun <laughs> Uh, that uptown was amazing. I I, I remember seeing the Matrix there. Yes, I saw uh, it there as yeah. well. And um, oh, what else is it? The Doors. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing the Doors there. That was yeah. I saw back in ninety one. I think. Yeah. 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 Good theater. Such a good. What theater. is it now? Anything? It is, is it a, a Rogers. Now? It's a Rogers store. They were mm -hmm. going to build a condo, but there was a fire and it burnt. That's also a very Toronto thing to say. <laughs> they were going to build a condo, but it burnt. It was going to be declared a landmark, but it burnt. Burnt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that would be another good show. It burnt. It burnt. <laughs> we could Just, do it. Yeah, famous stories of Toronto landmarks that are, that are burnt. And let's also be completely annoying <laughs> by not showing photographs of what it used to look like. It's literally just... You should only watch this show if you remember it or think you do. You sort of ha have half memories. <laughs> it's a quiz at the beginning. If you don't answer these three questions. And somebody needs to say like watch. left field <laughs> stuff like, oh, was Danny Bonaducci there? I'm thinking of something else. So I, yeah. I don't know all the nuances of all, you know, the, no. the religions or the history no. of the Wookiee planet or anything like that. But me neither. Uh, no. I do know that I have tried multiple times to watch the Star Wars holiday special and uh, I, I can't get through it all in one sitting. I've seen it once and my friend, uh, I, you know him too, Bryce Hallett. Bryce, yeah, oh, Bryce, yeah. yeah. Um, Bryce has it on VHS and we watched mm -hmm. it once and he's got the copy with the original commercials. That's amazing. And seeing ads for like, you know, whatever baseball player for like this candy bar or this kind of thing. Yeah. That was like my favorite part of it. It's one of the worst things I have. I've heard they're going to remake it. Well, there's a Lego Star Wars holiday special coming out this year. And I don't better know what that means. Arthur. I was saying that to myself. I'm going, <laughs> is this just because Lego, <laughs> the Lego brand has a whole series of Star Wars tie-in specials mm. and TV series. Yeah. 
So are they just remaking their own holiday special, new script, new whatever? Or is it a shot for shot remake in Lego <laughs> of the original horrible special, which is what I oh. really want it to be. And yeah, I want yeah. that B. Arthur, that B. Arthur uh, Star Wars character Lego. Oh my gosh. Yeah. There, was, there was one of the, the recent releases of a Star Wars movie that I, I went to go see. I can't think of which one, but it, I went to an afternoon screening and I was there with like, there was a a family, I guess, had had like a little party for their kids or something. They were in the front rows in front of me. And there was one scene where they were making some kind of dish, some kind of meal, and they were putting the ball of dough together. And right, little girl in front of me said to her mom, mom, are they making matzah? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Wookiees are Jewish. <laughs> reveal. Big reveal. Um, how are the book? How's the, the book life coming along for you? Book life? Well, I still have the first two books that I are still always on sale. Um, this is the, one of them, friends. That's the first book. That one you can only get on Amazon at the moment. Uh, oh. I do have copies of my second book. Um, you can get that on Amazon, and I have those for sale, a limited number. If you find me on social media, I can drop it off or mail it to you. Nice. Uh, and I'll take uh, PayPal or e-transfer or even and secure credit card it. transaction. <laughs> I signed it too. Yeah, you did. I, so nice. I'm amazing. You are amazing. I'm a good guy when you buy my book <laughs> in person. <laughs> uh, and I'm writing another book, which um, I was hoping would be published this year, mm. but uh, it's on hiatus. Everything got kind of crazy and real and... Uh, yeah. Other, other projects and stuff like that took to the forefront. So maybe next year, we will see. For sure. Do you, yeah. uh, do you get kind of snacky when you're writing? Do you have like some m and uh, for you, or you? I am an equal opportunity, savory snack guy, chips, <laughs> nuts, like salty sweet is also a super good combination. Like I said, the popcorn and the, yeah. and the uh, M&Ms. Um, there's like a chocolate caramel peanut corn thing that we'll buy once in a while, but it's like crack in this house. Like it yeah. never lasts. So yeah. I really don't allow myself. Um, <laughs> we live not too far from a Soma chocolatier as well. So it's one of my favorite places in Toronto. Oh yeah. my God. They're Mayan hot chocolate. Yeah. Mm, so, so good. I'll go maybe twice a year and just buy all their little bottles of stuff. So we'll have like the, the chocolate covered dried fruit and nice. uh, some of the almonds and stuff like this. And their flourless chocolate cake is amazing as well too. It truly really is. So I started off mm, by saying nice. I only like salty stuff <laughs> unless of course it's sweet. And if it's salty and sweet, yeah. Uh, but generally, yeah, for sure. The, the, nor the normal stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's so good. Well, thank you so much for joining me today for a, a good a food blast. and comedy chat. It was food, so comedy. Fun. Do you remember when? <laughs> Those things. But yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. And this. Uh, and we had Gord Oxley stop. And in, we had Gord nice. Oxley. That's a win. That's an absolute win. I can already hear Gord apologizing for how much time he took up in our, uh, our chat today. <laughs> took up so much time. We're laughing because it's true. <laughs> So true. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Reminds me, I should go grab something. Hold on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Kelly doesn't know it yet, but we've replaced her regular coffee with yeah. new instant POW coffee. Yeah, here we go. Um.